The Kamala Harris campaign has been an absolute dumpster fire, okay? And for the people that are wondering, what would it look like with Kamala Harris as president? Well, I mean, take a look at how they handled Maui. Take a look at how they handled the uh, hurricane victims. Take a look at your everyday life. Uh, and when you look at how they are doing things, it's it's obvious. There's a clear pattern that they don't care about you. They don't care about any of us. And I, I understand the whole thing about politicians, but this is a matter of putting common sense back in charge and a plethora of other things as well. But, um, you know, we can't have somebody who doesn't take the job seriously in office. We can't have somebody who doesn't put the American people first. OK, the people that make this country the great country that it is. OK, we can't have people that are trying to turn our daughters into sons and sons into daughters. OK, we can't we can't have this stuff in charge. It's just unacceptable. And then you have their own party fighting for reparations, but their reparations went to the immigrants. And, and then again, that was never going to happen in the first place. That would just increase the crime rate. I, I'm just I'm just really kind of disgusted by the Democrats. And that's that's my thoughts about that. So we're going to get right into this. People are waking up and seeing that this lady does not care about us. All right. She's going to make our life harder. And we all know that Kamala Harris in office is going to increase inflation. It's going to make our life more difficult. So that's that. And uh, but before we get into this video, I just want to say, if you're new here, welcome to the King Squad. This is the best reaction channel on YouTube. And if nobody told you guys today, you guys are awesome. And I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. You guys are the bomb.com. And don't let anybody tell you any different. And I hope everybody's having a great and awesome day. And if you're not, well, you woke up this morning. That's a great and awesome thing right there. All right. I hope everybody's making their money legally and drinking their water and all that kind of stuff. Taking a walk outside. Be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. Let's go. The Kamala joyride to the White House is hitting the skids. After riding a wave of coconut memes to the top of the ticket, Harris is quickly falling behind Trump in a slate of major national polls. One shows a dead heat with her previous five-point lead evaporating. And on top of that grief, here's this beef. Tensions are said to be rising between the Biden and Harris campaigns. Team Kamala has been grumbling that Joe's White House aides aren't really syncing up Biden's messaging and schedule in a way that works for her campaign. So with time running out to turn things around, Kamala is accusing Donald Trump of hiding his health records, which is her area of expertise after acting as Joe's caretaker. He's not being transparent with the voters. He's not being transparent. So check this out. He refuses to release his medical records. I've done it. He is unwilling to do a 60 Minutes interview. He is unwilling to meet for a second debate. It makes you wonder, why does his staff want him to hide away? Are they afraid that people will see that he is too weak and unstable? Wow, she really thought she ate with that. She, she really thought that she was talking at heat. <laughs> she really thought she said something just now. Unbelievable. Let's get back into the video. <laughs> Lead America. Yeah, NBC's data guru boils the Kamala polling crash down to a simple premise. Who is helping you and who is hurting you? We asked about President Biden's policies. Are they helping or hurting your family? Just a quarter of voters said they're helping. Nearly half said they're hurting. And then here's the interesting twist. We also asked folks, think back to when Donald Trump was president. Did his policies help or hurt your family? And look at the difference. 44% helping, 31 hurting. Trump's, the, the retrospective, you would say, opinion of Trump's presidency among voters, arguably higher now than when he was president. So, Jesse, good to see you. You too. Thanks. I don't mean that. <laughs> no, I know you don't. I don't want to look at you anymore. <laughs> I don't want to look at you anymore. The show's been too much. Yeah, I know. But look, hey. You guys, we, it's Monday. We keep talking, <laughs> hearing about the October surprise. Is yeah. the October surprise the polling? Mm, could be. Mm. Uh, I thought it was the hurricanes, but the polling's a mess if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican like myself. I told you so. Didn't say red wave, but I told you so. The polling and the betting markets are a disaster. Barack Obama is scolding black Americans. She's raised a billion dollars and is losing. I think they're stealing her money because, you know, they get a cut when they do these ad buys on television. <laughs> the media strategy, they've changed it. She's doing Brett Baer's show. I think Doug wants to be one lucky guy. Ah. He's trying to get booked on Outnumbered. And she shot the whole <laughs> rationale for her candidacy right in the heart when she said that I wouldn't do anything differently. And now she's looking for ways to separate herself from Joe Biden. But she's such a machine politician, she doesn't know how to do that. She's always just said yes and gotten ahead. She's always agreed with the party boss and gotten promoted. And now she's the party boss. 
but she's still loyal to Joe because she knows she didn't earn it. And so she's scared because she's never had to make her own decision. And she's afraid of Biden because no one F's with a Biden. And any Democrat that's criticized Biden, uh, look at Eric Adams. So she's nervous about criticizing him. He, Trump doesn't need to do anything more. Uh, what else does he have to prove? She's trying to bait him and it looks desperate because she's down and she knows it. He's gotten seven debates under his belt. I mean, they've raided his house. They've leaked his tax returns. What else do we need to see? Honestly, we've seen too much from Donald Trump. We know exactly what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. He's now wiser. He's not going to then agree to a debate that's just going to have no upside. Mm -hmm. He smells a trap. It's not worth it. And he already agreed to the Fox debate. He agreed to two debates. She said no to the Fox debate. And now she wants another one. Sorry, it's too late. Yeah, I think you're right about that last clip. It was definitely baiting. It was like no one was taking that seriously. Harold, I think you were the, one of the first people to say that they needed to concentrate more on policy. And I think you're seeing TDS exhaustion. You can only set fire to people's hair for so long and then suddenly they're all bald like Joy Reid. You can't keep telling people that Trump is evil. It doesn't mean anything. Bald? Yeah, now they're stuck with this non-policy, non-competent, politician known as Kamala Harris. How does it feel, Harold? Pretty bad, doesn't it? It's good to be back. Yeah. I hope yeah. everybody had a good weekend. I would say uh, a couple of things. Um, to your point about the debate, I think that President Trump is probably analyzing this in a way that says, I got beat the first time, or some people thought I got beat the first time. I'm gaining in the polls. What's the advantage to, whether he won or lost, what's the advantage to, to, to doing another one? I, I've always said I think the country benefits. When you're running for president, you're running for the privilege to serve the country. But I get that rationale. Two, this race is tight. Uh, I would agree that it feels like uh, over the last, I, I, I agree with Dana about how you look at this race after Labor Day. You look at day by day and she who wins spoken the day. She hasn't yet, Harold. Yeah, well, we, I was just going to say, did I miss it? That's a free agreement. Yes. No, no, yeah. we, no, no, but we've had this <laughs> conversation smart. before, and Dana, Dana, maybe Dana didn't say this, but I'm going to give her credit for it. You look at after Labor Day till Election Day, who wins the day? Mm -hmm. And I believe that whoever wins the most days oh, yeah, from Labor Day to yeah. Election Day, media and so forth, mm -hmm. they end up winning the election. And President Trump has had a run here over the last several days. I think it was smart of her to accept uh, the invitation to come on Fox, and she's coming on our pal Brett Baer's show, who I know will be tough and fair with her, and will elicit answers around the border, will elicit answers around her change positions on serious issues like border security and even like the economy and things that she would do differently. I think one of the things that Vice President Harris did not do well last week was her answer about what would you do differently uh, over the last several years. I think to say nothing. Yeah, so uh, really quickly, I just had to unmute myself. I just wanted to bring that up right there. Um, I have that right here. What would you do differently? I just want to show this in case you haven't seen it. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Well, if, if anything. Wow. I just want to show that really quickly in case you haven't seen it, because uh, that is huge. Thing suggests that you're not in Harris did not do well last week was her answer about what would you do differently uh, over the last several years? I think to say nothing suggests that you're not anticipating different facts and circumstances. I don't think anything's wrong with saying over the last four years we had facts come our way and we behaved with all of the data and we thought we did the best things. But going the next four years, I'll be the boss. I hope she's able to do some of that on the show with him. Finally, um, there's a challenge with base voters on both sides. I think that President Trump has made a decision to close here. He's going to go after his base. He's going to double down. And I think some of the language is a little dark for me, uh, but I think it's going to excite his base. Remember, he's never gotten over 47 percent of the popular vote when he's run each time. He got 46.5 when he beat Hillary and he got 46.7 uh, of the overall vote when he lost to Biden. If he gets to 48 that could very well spell a win for him nationally. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I think she has decided that I'm going to try to fire my base up, and she's got a, a distinct challenge with black men right now. She's got to get a message that excites, animates, and motivates them in Detroit and Atlanta and Philadelphia specifically over the next three weeks. She does that. We're going to have a, a nail-biter here again, and 
We'll have to see what happens. All right. Uh, that was a half-hearted defense. <laughs> Judge, so uh, Kamala keeps, they keep saying, oh, she wants to separate herself from Joe. And then, of course, she gets accused of plagiarism, which, again, <laughs> it puts her in sync with Joe. Yeah, right. No, I mean, they're two peas from the same pot. Yeah. I mean, she's the one who was supporting him, saying, you know, everything is fine with his health. I mean, you don't have to worry about Joe. He's got more energy than all of us. But I think what's amazing is she says that it's time to turn the page. She said, I'm going to have a new way forward. And I'm not uh, Joe Biden. But she is not smart enough. I got to tell you, Harold, how could you be running for president of the United States of America and not be smart enough to say, gee, I already said in one speech what I would do differently. Why can't I remember what I said in that speech to explain to the American people why I will be different? The woman is, is, she just doesn't have the wits about her in terms of politics, which makes sense because she didn't get one vote to be in this position. They threw Joe under the bus. And I got to tell you, I love the Axios article. I love this whole thing about the, 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 uh, the palace intrigue. You know, either Joe Biden is intentionally stepping on her or they're just not coordinating. And maybe they're not coordinating according to the Axios article because the Biden people are upset or because, you you know, her people aren't giving the Biden people the respect that they deserve. But the truth is, all of a sudden, we see Joe Biden walking into the press room, interrupting Karine Jean-Pierre to say the longshoreman strike is, you know, it's over until January, when she's in Michigan about to take credit for it. And the thing that keeps happening with DeSantis, I work with DeSantis, he's great. And she's, you know, she's accusing DeSantis of not caring when things are uh, at a terrible, terrible stage. But her hypocrisy, her inability to identify what the American people want to hear from a candidate for president is just stunning to me. She shouldn't be running for town council. Mm. Why isn't Trump more ahead then? You asked me the question. Why do you think he's in a dead heat if what the, you're saying well, is right? Well, right now, Trump r right now has made incredible strides. He's ahead in, in, what, six of the last polls when two weeks ago she was ahead because everybody came out with joy and hope thinking she's going to be great. Now they see the woman, you know, she's not that competent. And one, and I'm say one more thing, 60 minutes, she has the gall to say Donald Trump should do 60 minutes when they took one answer and switched it for another i wouldn't do 60 minutes either if i were donald trump that's all in your face <laughs> yeah dp yes should the tension really be between the party and the voters for not giving them the chance to have a primary yeah. i mean this all comes down to the fact that kamala was nobody's first second third fourth fifth choice and so you have you have god love him harold ford pretending to care about her and yeah. it's just sad to watch it, Harold. I was crying. There's but anyway, a, Dana, the question's book, for Dana. There's a new book coming out tomorrow. I think it's by Jonathan Alter, in which he oh, says... Oh, read it. That, oh, yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> I actually haven't. Um, but I did read an article about it saying that mm. Nancy... It'll detail how Nancy... Even Nancy Pelosi didn't think she was the right one. But they realized with the time that they had that they had to figure out a way to get behind, and so they decided to roll the dice with it. I would say this past weekend felt like that was when the dam started to break. She, in the media blitz that they had, cannot get a foothold on anything. So she's slipping, right? And then Tim Walls, every time he goes out, he oh steps on a rake. Gosh. Or a shotgun. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the, the other flashpoint is that something Jesse said, which is the whole basis of this thing is that she wasn't going to be Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. But then what Bill McInturf um, at, told NBC, she's asking for another term from the unpopular incumbent party. So I think that when she is throwing things out there like you have to look at Trump's health, it is kind of craven because she still has not answered the question of when did you know that Joe Biden was not able to be uh, the president for another four years, even if she thought he could get through this uh, the rest of this year. So she's going to do an interview with Brett Baer on Wednesday. That's high stakes. But with high stakes, you sometimes get high rewards. Mm -hmm. It could go very well for her. If it doesn't, I think you will continue to see the beginnings of anonymous Democratic staffers like we've seen on her camp mm -hmm. in the past saying, yeah, we knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So we're going to stop it right there. And um, that's pretty much it. So one of the main things I just want to really point out is the fact that 
we're we're seeing it number one and it's just it makes sense that okay it's a dumpster fire and things are leaning more towards trump okay the polls are leaning more towards trump okay we saw the call me uh well call her daddy podcast we saw her uh 60 second interview we're, we're seeing her uh there was a there was like another podcast I think I, it slipped my mind temporarily but we're seeing these podcasts that she's doing we're seeing the way that she uh, we're seeing the answers that she gives we're seeing the platforms that she's spoken on uh like the interview she did with Oprah and we're seeing that she has no plan she really isn't concerned with the American people the issues that we're going through okay and then there's the border crisis the entire border patrol endorsing Donald Trump we're seeing this stuff and. It, it, the the answer becomes clear by the day, okay? Clear by the by the minute, really. Um, it doesn't really take much to to really see it, but I think some people would rather stay blind. I think some people are just you can't save them all. That's kind of that's kind of where my head is at when I when I see uh, the people that are choosing to still vote for Kamala Harris. You, that's kind of how it strikes me. You can't save them all, and some people would rather remain in delusion. Um, my <laughs> my brother he kind of says something similar. Uh, funny as he says it like this he says uh some people would rather live um a comfortable lie than an uncomfortable truth and um that's kind of that kind of applies to the whole Kamala Harris campaign to me. Some people would rather think that, you know, the Democrats are on their side and that they they have your best interests at heart and they they want to uh help the American people uh be better, but even even um who who was it? Uh JFK, he he comes over and says um, or who, let me see, let me see, it is slipping my mind, really, not JFK, RFK, is it Robert F. Kennedy, I just want to be sure, yes, okay, so I apologize, so there's that, okay, so RFK, I apologize, okay, it slipped my mind, but yes, RFK, even he left the Democratic Party and said, um, that this is not the same party from way back in 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 back in his day. Okay, the Democrat Party is a party of like woke liberalism and leftism that is not about helping the uh, working American at all. So, you know, it's, I'm not surprised that uh, the polls are leaning more towards Trump. Okay, so that's all for this video, you guys. As always, I appreciate each and every single one of you guys who left a positive comment, and um, thank you to everyone who tuned into this video, likes, comments, shares, and subscribes. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. I hope everybody continues to have an awesome and great day, a blessed and prosperous day, all those beautiful things. Okay, make sure everybody, I hope everybody's making their money legally and drinking their water, take a walk, get some fresh air, okay, uh, get some sunlight, all that beautiful stuff, and uh, comment down below what you guys think down below in the comments. I always look forward to hearing what you guys have to say, and that is all for this video. I will see you in the next one. Peace.